Got a nat one okay. with my new die, so there you go. Um, all right, so last time on uh, Agoth Doomhand, we um, what did we do? Oh, that's what you Stag had just seduced the uh, Ceramorph named Asix, and who turned out to be one of Naglin's. Uh, friends, lovers. lovers or friends, um, like, yeah, something like that. Um, they they quell bald for years, and uh, um, uh, it turns out that they were sort of um, hiding or secretive about um, the vessel colony versus the. Shrezzle colony of mind flares and what um, is going on in Striad. We don't really quite know, um, but you guys are under the, you're in the time heist. So you had started um, about at 9 p.m. or 9.30, yeah, 9 p.m. You started um, about, let's say, almost a half a day ago. And you guys have been going around Striad, and you met, and that's where you seduced um, Asix in the bar there. And then she showed you a secret passageway that Naglin and her have been using to to spy on people and to spy on the town to make sure that the Shrezzle colony of Mind Flares is not uh, up to no good. Um, and you do know that the ritual. You guys have this sort of plan to either swap out or steal the old um, blue skull that you know is in the area. Um, Naglin knows where that is, um, or, or at least he can maybe help you find it. Um, and that's sort of where we are. Oh, yeah, you guys went through a couple dungeons. Um, Chris, your stag turned into a shambling mound eating a mushroom. Um, mm -hmm. He has... Um, it was a very weird... That was a weird dungeon. Um, I kept on like... So J I feel like, Jake, you came just... or Yeah, Sprock came just as you entered the second room where you you kept on going and then uh, as soon as you got to the other side of the room you morphed back and you're trying to mm -hmm. figure out how to uh, do it all you had to do was use magic at the right at the end but no one did it close enough until it was too late um, but uh, Matt had a great idea of shooting an arrow through it sort of climbing backwards and then he met um, it, was such a, it was a really cool it was like a cool point I had him just as his mind uh, went through that plane of, of reality or plane shift I had him meet his um, his maker essentially I had him meet his uh, the gray mind flare um, beholder which was cool um, but I, I don't think we'll see that person again until like two years, but um, unless hopefully, hopefully sooner. Yeah, hopefully um, soon. And then you guys made it across the acid and up to the top. Um, everyone was sort of everyone's everyone's like sort of decent uh, stamina wise. I think maybe a um, couple people might need a long rest. Um, not 100% sure, nor is it my business. I think we're, I think we're okay. Um, and right when you got to the top, there was a lot of wind blowing you, um, backwards, because, but because the shambling mound was so strong, um, and sturdy, it was able to get to the end, and I think, um, once you got to the end, that clock sort of disappeared, and Naglin showed up. That's where we, that's where we are. So, um, yeah, and everyone, I think everyone was able to get up here. Yeah. So as the wind blew, um, was blowing, it stopped. And that, uh, 
structure that was blowing, causing the wind was blowing. It seemed to be some sort of, there was some sort of magic um, causing it to blow down the hallway, um, pushing you guys off the edge. Naglin um, showed up after giving you that that rap um, about, um, here it is. He was giving you a rap about gnomes and a dungeon state of mind, you know. That's right. Um, yeah. And there you go. He's there. He's in front of you. He says, forgot how his voice sounded. It was gnomish. He says, uh, whoa, look who we have here, survivors. Should I be afraid of you guys? Uh, Only welcome. if you give up the information we want. What sort of information is this? We hear you know about a blue skull. Hmm. Perhaps. But uh, who are you, gentlemen? And excuse, pardon me, lady. And Well, actually, I see here a shambling mound. Ooh. A, a, a ceramorph. Pretty lady, taller than the rest. And what is that? Uh, an elf? What kind of party is this? Uh, anyway. Out of the back we hear, friend or foe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends. Uh, I guess the only real way that you could have found this access was... Did Asix let you through? She would have... If you prove yourself to me, I may help you. The mound nods and points to uh, something on its hip. What is what is jutting out of your hip? Uh, a sword by the name of Tranquility. Is that Axis's? Oh, let me see this. The Sword of Tranquility. Interesting. How do you have this? Where are you from? And where did you steal it from? When did you get into my palace? It seems to be more worn out than my own. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, no, Chris, you, you got the ability to speak back. Oh, I can speak again? Okay. Yes. Oh. Oh, then I would have said, well, um, we we are from the future. The future you uh gave us your the sword saying it was your family sword and um this is how you could tell that we are who we say we are. Interesting. I uh, need to see my... If if you are from the future and I gave you this sword of tranquility, which is highly unlikely, though it does seem worn out, I should have an exact copy of this in my study, no? <laughs> you should. It's you not should. a copy. It is the same one. Mm. What happens when they occupy the same space? Well, let's not try and find out right now. Unless the blue skull is in your study. You know, unfortunately, it's not. The blue skull comes out in a ritual known as the Harmony. Um, lucky for you, it's at 8.37 a.m. this morning. Uh, but that's only in... It's like two seven hours. It's two twenty mm -hmm. right now. Oh, looks like you guys have some time. Um, why don't you follow me up? I don't quite trust you just yet, so I'm going to keep you. You can have a look around the uh, the tower um, while I quickly uh, take a look at what we uh, what we have. Um, One question before you go. Do you know a, a being by the name of Bloomerthrick? 
Lomothric. Yeah. Um, Lomothric. Lomothric, Lomothric. Hmm. I've heard the name before. Not quite sure. Okay. Sounds familiar. I wasn't sure if that'd be a name you'd remember all the way back here. Sounds, uh, sounds mind flary. But where did I hear that name, Lumithric? Must be one of those. Well, you know, the the harmony is coming, and the uh, Ceramorphs are awfully excited about the the new tadpoles being being brought in. Perhaps Lumithric has something to do with that. I, th I think I overheard one of them talking at, back at the bar a couple of days ago. I'm not 100% sure. Well, if you want to go check out that sword, I'll uh, check with my friends here. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go check out the sword. If, there's, if I have two, you will know uh, I will allow you to climb the steps into my into up up to the palace where you can come into my study, and I will introduce you to uh, some lore that that's that, that regarding this sword. Um, you see, I've been studying dragons, and the sword of tranquility is one that is used well. Enough talk. You guys have enough time. I don't want to have to tell yeah. the story twice. You yeah. uh, will... Uh, why don't you just wait in the lobby here? Um, and he opens the door up. Uh, and he runs inside. Um, and you hear like a... You hear footsteps and then pew, a vanish. So obviously he's teleported somewhere. Um... But the, the palace door is open. Give me a. Um, it just the, there's these endless spiral staircase that that you that you guys can just see percep perception. Um, uh, no perception check required. And he just sort of runs up these steps. Um, and as soon as he makes the, the turn, you, you don't hear his footsteps anymore. Sprock, you're you're wise. Um, yeah. Is it how much can we tell him about the future before we break things? Huh. <laughs> that is a cool point, Chris. And then that's a cool point. <laughs> Am I going to have to redo this whole campaign? We can tell him as much as we want because he'll just be considered a fool if people don't believe him. But we do have to be careful about things, uh, objects being in the same space. Like the sword. Oh. Um, so should we run after him? I think so. Before we go, I was, can we tell him that everyone's going to die and the mind flares are going to split up let's try and get him to help us first but it's the last resort we can tell okay all right um, i'll start scrambling up after him up the <laughs> stairs so you remember that first um that first room here let me cut over to it uh it wasn't a room i mean the, uh... This is Crosby. Crosby failed a deck save, causing him to get smashed by a giant alchemist in the Shadow High realm. Don't be a Crosby. Roll high and subscribe. Striad. So, the Naglin's Palace um, is right here. So. And there seems to be some sort of back way entrance that you guys found. Um, just but from looking at it on the map, this is where it is. This this entrance is not there. It's just a solid tube going all the way up. Um, but it does have windows on it. 
And as you guys um, spin, you see one. You'll 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 see one window, um, and it looks like there's nothing but dirt. And then you guys get through. As you're climbing the ladders, you you see the exit, and all of a sudden you're ten feet up, um, and you can see that there's some sort of glowing crystals on the ground, all around the ground. And then you go to the next window, and now all of a sudden you're you're 50 feet up. And then you go to the next window, and all of a sudden, and it, it, it sort of um, exponentially grows in height. The next window, you're 200 feet more. And then three, and all of a sudden, it feels as if you are way up in the clouds looking down, even though you've only been about four four flights so it's either um you guys are really fast (laughs) or there's some sort of magic at play um but it's not really you wouldn't necessarily be able to i guess you, you you're smart enough to determine that there's certainly magic at play um, going on, let me just recreate this tower. Um, but as you continue to go up and up and up and up, there doesn't seem to be a door. So you keep going up, it keeps getting exponentially farther away and farther away from the ground and farther away from the ground. Uh, maybe it's like that other portal. Can I do can I do my uh, magic or is it just only speaking? You can do you you were able to to do I gave you your control back for um, all my stuff. All your well yeah, you can do your ma- yeah, you can do your stuff. You're just shambling okay. mound. I um, just look like a shambling mound. Yes. But if you're going to try to like we'll, we'll let the role play happen, but if you're going to try to like, you know, convince people to do things, you might have a, no, no. a hard time. It, it's going to, so I'll uh, shake and shimmy a little and a couple uh, photoluminescent orbs flutter out of my body and starts floating around me, some dancing magical light. And um, uh, I'll take it around this portal with me as we're walking, see if it does it like the other one. The... Um... The hallway light uh, seems to brighten up the passageway, and there seems to be. Um, give me a perception check. Uh, are you are you leading the charge, or is or is? Um, He's leading the charge. Chris is leading the charge. Give me a perception check, so. uh, Stag. That's uh, a six plus, probably four of perception. No, I have a. Also, disadvantage and minus two. Because I'm drunk. Oh, yeah. So that's a five and... Oh, nine. yeah. Um, Jake, they got drunk at a that's bar. A, that's everyone, a seven. Everyone around you is drunk except for you. Um, you do not notice it. Uh, Jake, Jake um, and you, you sort of keep spinning around and, and you go around and Jake is... Uh, following you. Jake, give me your perception check as you're sort of dumbfounded. Um, you look outside and you see that you're you're like, it looks like to be a thousand feet up. It's the craziest thing, thing you've ever seen. Maybe not the craziest, but right. I would think that you know the shadow the shadow monster you saw was pretty crazy. Did you see that guy? Yeah. I think Sprock I did. I've seen everything. Seen it. I see it all. Yeah, Sprock has been a Sprock's a survivor. He so won't far. give up. He's going to work harder. Since I'm feeling a lower drop, Chris. I have a feeling this is... <laughs> It's in store. I feel like a, a lore drop is coming. An ad-lib lore drop. 
Well, those are the best kind. Because yeah. then you have to try and make sense of it after the fact. <laughs> Did that you, was the uh, reason you started recording these, is so you can remember all the stuff you said. It's true. It's 100% true. And now I can just go to YouTube and and look at it. Yeah. Um, Jake, did you roll me a perception? No, sorry. Twenty-five. Um, Jake, you are running up and up and up, and you realize that these lights, um, you. You know that the last, I get, I don't, do you know? Yes, Amer, uh, Mind Flare. You know that um, through reading minds and your, your ability to understand um, th- other people's thoughts, you know that that Stag had figured out the last uh, trap or puzzle um, by using the the magic, and you understand that he's trying to use magic here to see if the um, sort of mechanism that's causing your inability to go f- uh, to find the door to unlock, and it, and it has. Um, the problem that, that Chris was happening, uh, that was Chris was... Uh, um, f- the problem with Chris was that he's, one, drunk, and always turning to the left. And in between each of the uh, windows, um, there seems to be a faint, a little cut out of a door. Um, and as you get, as you look at this door, uh, it seems like the every time you turn, um, you see a you see a window looking outside, and then you turn again. There's a window, and in between those two windows, there's a faint little cut out of a door. It's just sort of blended into the to the wall. Uh, right in the middle of the staircase, so it's not even with the stairs, but there's one like there's one step that's even with it. Um, so you see that cut out. There's no door handle, but you do have a knob. Do have a knob. Turn. I'm gonna put the knob on. Turn it. <laughs> <laughs> knob on that knob. No. <laughs> Everything in that room just disintegrates now. Uh, are you gonna use the doorknob? Yes, what, let's use the doorknob. Is, is that the the doorknob? <laughs> what doorknob was this? The, this is the doorknob that makes the magical room. Oh, the the room of resting or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I need that room of resting. It's up to you. I mean, we can we can. Do you want to go in there and rest? Do you guys have the room of resting lasts eight hours, um, mm-hmm. and it has your. It can be used as a way to store things. There is another door in that room, though. So mm-hmm. just remember, and there's a. It doesn't have a knob on it. Yeah. Um, and there's a. A lockbox in the closet with a tumbler. And I think nine well, you have to roll points to, on it. There's the door. Yeah. There was definitely a roll to that. They're Did like I... tumblers. Like end letters or characters. <laughs> All right, Jake's breaking the game. Go ahead. Roll me a uh, D twenty and let's see uh <laughs> so, breaking the game. Well, I don't know. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's putting a, a doorknob on. But I guess it's like a magic, though. So it's sort of. So it, it just from the doorknob itself in space creates this magical. Yeah. Space, extra dimensional space. Yes. Four. 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 Oh, that's too low. <laughs> um, the doorknob doesn't, it, I think you have to activate it. Let me see. Um, that's too, that's way too low, but I forgot what, what the uh, results are of that. I think it just doesn't work. I think it doesn't ed- like attach to the door. Um, but when you were fighting the, uh, time dragon, 
you rolled high enough so that the door when it you opened. Were, yeah, it opened. So, which was pretty cool. Um, so nothing happens. Your your doorknob doesn't um, ignite anything, and nothing opens up. Um, but because you also use that magic item, um, just as you are sort of holding the thing, um, the door opens up, and Naglin comes out, and he's holding two two swords of tranquility, and <laughs> the space. The space is vibrating. Um, it's almost, uh, he says, I don't know if I sh should be holding both of these. I grab one, uh, Chris, took him out of his hand and throw <laughs> it back at Chris and say, oh, don't you fucking hold those two things together. <laughs> you trying to kill this entire space time continuum. <laughs> and then we go in the door he and says, push him in the door and push him down into a chair. This is Reno. Reno rolled low during death saves and didn't get healed by his group. Don't be a Reno. Roll high and subscribe. Um, he says, huh, um, before we get into it, what did you mean by space? No time for that. Where is the fucking skull? Um, Give me a perception check, uh, Sprock. Investigation, rather. Fine. My other one sucked. <laughs> well, Twelve. Twelve. You look around this room, you see... You see... Maps drawn out that looks like, uh... Like the inside of, like... They look like planets, but just dots, um, globes. Looks like um, there's other paintings of, of dragons, and there's uh, a lot of images of the moon. Um, and there's a study, and there's books. And just from your roll of a 12, this guy is fascinated with space, it seems. Um, but these are relics from, like, not that you can, they don't belong in the Mishram Kingdom, they don't belong in the Underground Paths, they don't belong in the Crystal Plains. Like, you've, they don't have these sort of, um, paintings and images, uh, down here often. You might have seen one frame or two just in, in passing at the market, but um, Naglin's going to say, well, you know, uh, the reason why I asked you about space was because it's sort of a, a thing of mine. I, I'm, I'm infatuated. So it's, I, I love it. Um, but I, and I I'm a collector. I love this art. Um, I try to find anyone who knows anything about the sky. We don't see the sky from the underground. Uh, some people don't even think the sky exists. To even have a thought that there's something beyond the sky is just something to hopefully I can find for myself. So sorry, I got excited when you said space time. <laughs> so he's sort of like a, a nerd. Um, he says, then let me just tell you really quickly. Um, what do you want to know? Where the where the blue skull is? The blue skull every year the uh, the uh, mind flares in Striad hold a ritual called the Harmony, where they take a bunch of either slaves or volunteers from the gnome colonies, which we like to give uh, volunteers because it helps us uh, with a, have a peaceful relation with the Ceramorphs. Um, well, during the Harmony, they become Ceramorphs. So all the mind flayers in the civilization, a lot of the gnomes, gather together at the chapel and what they perform what's called the harmony where they take tadpoles and uh, transition people into, you, you know what I mean. I'm familiar. 
Okay. Um, obviously, you're some sort of blue. It looks like mind flare, but and he's going to roll seventeen on perception. He's going to say you look like you're a shrezzle, a shrezzle colony, but uh, shrezzle colony mind flare with the sword of tranquility passed down to me from my future self. I'm going to have to overlook that shrezzle quality because those shrezzles are not ones to be trusted down here. Um, he says the blue mind, the blue skull is going to be found at the actual ceremony being held by one of the high up high respected mind flayers in the group uh, usually one of the older uh, more uh, senior mind flayer if you will um, and that will be obvious who that is uh, during the ceremony but you're going to have a hard time getting in because they really only let mind flayers observe it so do you know where they keep the skull otherwise? In in the chapel. Not really. Maybe underground. I just know it doesn't leave the chapel. Um but so we you're gotta gonna have an issue. They're gonna be they're gonna know you're coming. Mind flayers can read minds. They're gonna know you're coming. Uncle Sensor. You look here here. But uh, I may have just wave. a couple, a couple mm -hmm. things for you to wear that'll protect you. Let me do it for you, mommy. Let me do you want to play the game? Yeah, huh? yeah. I think he gets to roll the next. Uh, Chris, roll me a. Um, okay, we're rolling. Roll me a a history check. Okay. Can you take this? Hold this? No, no. Roll it into the box. That's a, a 10 plus 1 for an 11. Nice. 1, 1. Yeah. Um, Let's see. You do not know the power of the helmets that Nyla is pointing at you in. Uh, pointing towards you. Um, let me do that. Let me do that on the paper. <laughs> but you got to turn the. That's hilarious. I should get uh, Margo in here so she can. They can do their own like side quest. Yeah. Um. So Naglin holds out, um, or sort of points to you, and he says, um, "There's going to be a hard. It's going to be a hard time sneaking into the harmony because not a lot of not a lot of uh, outsiders okay, um, are allowed in. And if you're going to try to blend in, um, you're going to need some sort of." some sort of way to hide your, your mind or your thoughts from the colony. And he sort of points towards the helmets, but you, you don't, you rolled so low on your history check that you don't know what that. I wonder, try mommy. What that is. So, I wonder, try mommy. Yeah, you're going to go on the other side. Um, um, okay, sure. um, and then he's going to say you can use these as well and he's going to hand Ignis and you um, these bottles oh, 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 no. of these potions um, but unlike the other ones he's going to tell you what what they are. And he says, these are the only things that I can, um, these are the only things that I can really 
help you with. Um, I don't really have any other... I could come with you to try to show you the way into the chapel. But once you get there, you need to have something that will st stop the, the thought process. You don't want people to know you're coming, and they'll sense it. I have these helmets. I, I think you could... These helmets might be able to assist you with that, but... Um, and he sort of shows you four... Um, four helmets that's, that sort of look like... Uh, you know what? They don't sort of look like it. They look exactly like uh, Magneto's uh, helmet from X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Do I have any advantage as a Ceramore? I think Can you, I communicate or trick them? You, well, you see, you're, so you're blue. Um, oh, you know what Nagwin's going to say? Oh, how to get you inside. You know, I'm really being generous here with all my equipment and stuff because I just know my future self wants me to assist you. So I'm going to give you as much information as I can. And people are going to be afraid, not necessarily of you, uh, Sprock. They're going to be hesitant to trust you um, as you are a blue Shrezel colony ceramorph. Um, but you're from the future, so I'm not really sure how the thought what process I, what goes. Brought, what if I brought them all in there as my prisoners? Would that work? Um, to be could that maybe work? It could be. You wanna do you want to try to bring those bring these gentlemen in uh, as some sort of offering, um, like a to the harmony? No. Well, I mean, we, we also have our ways of sneaking in places. Yeah, I'd rather get them in not during the festival. And we find the, the skull when it's not happening. Maybe the night before. Well, no, we only have 24 hours. Yeah, you have 24 oh, hours in the past. It's happening in six hours. Oh, I forgot that you missed that, that session, too. Yeah, you're, you're on a time heist. You have... You guys started at 9 p.m. It's now 2:20 no. a.m., but it's not. It's more than that now. You guys spent about an hour, so it's about so 3, three. It's about 3:20 um, a.m. now. The harmony is going to start at 8:37 a.m. Oh, okay, so we have six hours. No, yeah. five. Hours. And we have to. We're going to pick up something back in town for um, Ignis at, at 5:30. And then I'll whisper to Sprock, or I'll tap my head, and when you read my mind, I'll tell you. And then we're going to steal everything from the rest of the town. <laughs> and that's what Aaron has said. Uh, During the ceremony? While everyone is going to the ceremony, we steal all the stuff. So how do, but the blue skull is going to be at the ceremony. So my thought is, while everyone is going there and at the ceremony, we steal their stuff, and then right as it's ending, we try and steal it. We, like, go to where everyone is, and as they're dispersing from there, follow where the, the skull is and take it. That's going to be hilarious. So it's either... Okay. Yeah. Um, he's going to say, well, uh, Sprock, you're a ceramorph. Um let's try out these helmets. Uh, and he puts one on it. He says, I'm going to think of a color. And that color is, um, can you, can you hear me? Um, and he's, he's thinking of red in his mind. Um, it's clear as day. Cause you're a ceramorph and you can use your mind. And he's like, now I'm going to change the color, but this time I'm going to wear this helmet. Um, Tell me what what color I am thinking of. And I can't tell at all, right? Right. Um, so these some something with the the helmets. He says uh, these helmets are a little tricky. That I do not know one hundred percent how to use them. They're finicky. So you can take these uh, as gifts from the my past to my future self. Um, these helmets 
if worn or activated correctly, you might want to play around with them. You have six hours to figure this out. Um, might help you hope, uh, you know, protect your mind from the mind flares. And he says, now that sort of tranquility, my, the history of uh, dragons is quite uh, renowned in my family. I know we've we've studied dragons for generations. The uh, Naglin uh, gnomes um, it was assumed that we gnomes weren't just from the underdark but my heritage I believe comes from the darker ground of the around the dark mountain now not a lot up there lives but I don't know it's been thousands of years but this sort of tranquility has been passed down and if you look at it there's a dragon head at the very base of it and rumor has it and this is just a rumor and a myth from my family that when you slay a dragon using this sword the sword's power increases i just don't know how the sword increases does it increase the the will of the of the warrior does it does it, the sword itself get stronger? I have no idea, and I haven't found a dragon to slay yet. But you know me, I'm not a warrior. Uh, well, uh, since you have a tranquility sword yourself, maybe I you do know of, that to some use. I do know a few dragons that uh, need to be slain. <laughs> just, that is uh, great information. Thank you. Yeah, I, from the past. I felt like Adventure Hook. More dragon battles, because those were fun. Um, well, that's interesting that you tell us that it's from, you're from the Dark Mountains, and this is a sword about slaying dragons, because from what Aranus has told me, there is a uh, big, dark, evil dragon up in those Dark Mountains. That I don't know about. Those mountains were just deadly and that's why they sort of killed off the plants in the in the area a lot of people thought that the forest itself was haunted the towns there seemed to be full of white dark pale beings teeth and blah, sort of blah. we made our escape and when we escaped we ran into the demon the demon tomb which teleported my ancestors uh, here. So that area, you'll have to be uh, exercise precaution. Beware, very wary of the demon tomb. Do you have any uh, ancestors that stayed stayed in that area? I don't know. I know that we had a family of six, but that's the farthest back this is going on. Who knows? I know that my uh, direct descendants, uh, or the greats in my family, they, they made it, but I don't know about their their siblings. Mm -hmm. um, and he's going to say before you go I know you have time thank you for uh, thank you for helping us here I guess I, I don't know what to tell you I, I'm not my future me <laughs> um, you can also take these potions um, and he's going to give each of you one they're little vials um, and these potions I got from, uh, where did I get these from? 
this guy named Dark Vision Studios. Uh, they're hilarious. So the first potion is called, and I'll screenshot these over to you, um, and you're, he's going to tell you this. Um, he's going to tell you what they are. The potion of perpetual politeness. Um, it makes the it makes the players very very whoever gets the potion it makes them super polite. We we need Aranus to get that one. Yeah. Um, the elixir of epic eyebrows. Um, you just your face just explodes into you have these massive eyebrows. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you how that would come into into play. Um, the the potion of exaggerated exits. Um, drinking this potion causes the user to exit every room dramatically with a burst of confetti. So <laughs> you could. Um, uh, and there's one, a mystery uh, mime mixture. This potion temporarily transforms the drinker into a mime. Um, they can only interact with the world silently using exaggerated, uh, exaggerated movements as mimes. And then uh, you have the gulp of glittering grace. Drinking this potion covers the player in a shimmering layer of glitter, making them the center of attention in any situation. So those are the... Um, and I'll just drop them into... Potion of body glitter. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you can make yourself the center of attention. You can make someone else the center of attention. You can make someone very polite. You can make someone a mime or make someone else a mime. Um, just remember your your checks when you throw them. Um, so those... those uh, Those potions, I think, will help with some hilarious um, role play. But also, as uh, Naglin said, I hope these uh, help you assist uh, assist you with your uh, your plan. Um, now, please leave. <laughs> um, any sort of gestures towards the door. Sadly. It is. Uh, is there anything else that looks of value just lying around? Um, because Aranus is going to try and steal it, and I want to do him justice. Okay. So you can not be spun. Give me an investigation check with Aranus, or I'll, I can just let me see what it is. Mm -hmm. Can I do that? Should be up to. Yeah, here I got him. Aaronus investigation. You know, every single time Aaron rolls investigation, it's always really high. So let's see what it actually it, it, is. Is he proficient in it? Yes, it's ridiculous. So the lowest he can roll is a ten, I think. It's an eight. It's ridiculous. Lowest he can roll is an eight. Yeah, I got. I'm gonna have him start doing animal handling. <laughs> Yeah, all right, so he gets a 17. Looks around the room, um, and what would Naglin have? Naglin would have a some sort of tool, some sort of time. There's some sort of uh, hourglass of some kind on his... It's either, it looks like an like a like a metallic hourglass, but you can't see the sand inside of it um, sitting on his desk. And Naglin is going to. So I don't know how because Naglin is standing at his desk, staring at you guys, asking you to leave. And he will uh, try and do it with his uh, invisible mage hand. <laughs> <laughs> try and like bring it back towards him or. Or I use press digitation to 
shower some confetti and distract Naglin, try and slide a hand it out of the the path. Naglin, I have to roll a uh, perception or something. So I'll have to. So if I get low, um, let's do a fifteen. Let's do a straight straight roll. Um, If it's low, lower than fifteen, he gets distracted. Well, you could do it against his uh, sleight of hand. Oh. Perception against sleight of hand. Where's his sleight of hand? Well, his sleight of hand would just be... Yeah, here we go. All right, so sleight of hand. Wow, 18. And a 6. All right, well, he steals this... Uh, so the power... So actually, it would be a it would be a disadvantage, right? Because you're, you're doing the... You're do, you're helping him essentially. Well, I think Aranus would do that himself. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it'd be helping um, oh, himself. He would press the dissertation and then try yeah. it. Got it. Yeah. Um, all right. So he gets a uh, random time clock thing. Um, clock or mechanism. This is Valley. Valley sacrificed himself because he only rolled low. Don't be a valley. Roll high and subscribe. That's going to be so funny when when and if you guys run into future Naglin, because he's going to be pissed. Well, Aaron can't say I uh, yeah. never did anything for him. No. Okay. You got him. Um, and no one cares about uh, Ignis. So we're going to, but Ignis has their stuff going on down at the. uh, Ignis has been, Ignis wouldn't steal anything from Naglin. She'd be checking the time, making sure we leave here so she can get back and get her, pick up her weapon. It is, you spent another 15 minutes there, so it's 335. Um, Now. All right, we head out. So when you guys head out, uh, who's going first? I guess it would be um, Ignis. Ignis, are you still drunk? Ignis is. Well, you tell me. It's three thirty in the morning. Ignis said she didn't stop drinking until I think we went in the tunnel. Yeah, Ignis is drunk. It was two hours ago. Um, Sprock, I think you're leading the pack of the ones who that didn't drink. Um. But you don't have to roll for this. Uh, it took you. It takes you guys two two revolutions upstairs to get to get to the base of the <laughs> of the <laughs> of the, of the palace. So mm-hmm. you look out the window, and it looks like you're only about maybe three flights, four flights of stairs up. Um, so that's some sort of powerful. Walter uh, Nagland. Yeah, powerful magic. Um, at the base of the, um, and Matt would, uh, want me to say polar, uh, seltzer water. Yeah. Polar seltzer water and Red Bull. Red Bull. Drink it. Drink it, Chris. Drink it up. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Hashtag Red Bull. Um, you guys get to the pace of the palace. And there's two ways you can go. You can go uh, out the back, um, the way you came, towards the bar, which would take you... I'm not really sure. You're going to have to get over that hump and climb. Or you guys can go back the through the crystals... And back around. Um, you do know that going from the crystal to the entrance was what? That'd be about an hour, I think. Yeah. Let me check on these notes. About an hour walk. It was a half hour. Yeah. It was nine. It's one hour from the town to the portal. Oh, nine so thirty. Your your specific time is nine thirty-two. That you have to get yes. back. You have to get back by nine thirty-two p.m. Yes. So I have a nine thirty. I have a ten thirty-seven stop here. So that was so. So from the portal 
to the tower is 15 minutes. Yeah. And from the tower to the gates is like, I think 25 minutes, 15 and then 10. And from the tower to the gate was another 20 minutes. 20 minutes center. Yeah. All right. So you're looking at. Saying it, it takes an hour to get from the town to the portal. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah. And then about about 35 minutes to get from where you are if you wanted to walk around. Yeah. So we're about like halfway at. Yes. And add like 10 minutes. Yeah. So if you do that, um, you'll be entering the town at. Uh, I think we would, don't we want to try and go back through the bar? Go back in the way we came? You can certainly do that here. That Instead of trying to have to re-enter the town, I'm a shambling mound for at least the next hour. <laughs> uh, I, even though I don't know that. Yeah. I'm a shambling mound. Maybe we can figure something out on the way back. Oh. But they're not going to let me in the town. Um, okay, so you guys, uh, go back the way you came, and you see the hallway. There's no, there's no real magic here preventing you guys from, um, going back. Going back. The only thing is that you have this, uh, pit of acid. Pit of acid, but there is a, um, Ignis's rope. There is an Ignis's pinned. rope. So if you guys want to try to each, uh, slide down. Um, you guys certainly can. <laughs> Sprock can hover, right? Sprock can hover, yes. Yep, I'm going to hover. Uh, Sprock hovers gracefully over the pit of acid. Um, what do you want? Rope. Athletics? Do we want to do a, or... a survival check on the rope? That's so funny. Um, yeah, athletics is fine. Let me find the Strength of Shambling Mound. I rolled an eight for Baroness. So plus four for the mound. Baroness falls in. That's an 11. That's a pass. See, all you need is a 10. Baroness uh, falls in, and he takes uh, some acid damage. Falls in again? Yeah, he's not very good at it. As I'm sliding down, I want to reach my hand, my shambling mound arm down and try and grab him and pull him up with me. He's going to take some damage, though. Yeah, I assume so. Yeah. Um, And I think that's it. Oh, roll for Ignis. Jake, you want to roll for Ignis? 2d6 plus 4 acid damage. Which will be... He's new to Iron Stoke. Oh, that's for that's for Aaron. Is this, so uh, what do you want me plus four a D twenty? So wow, a D twenty for Ignis's athletics. Um, got a batty twenty. Ignis made it. Ignis <laughs> jumps of course over. She, of course, she did. Jumps over like a, you know, natty twenty. Um, she gets her rope back, her arrows back. Um, so we'll tell six, six arrows. Yeah. Six arrows. She gets all the arrows and rope back. Somehow she like catapults, but guys, this is hilarious. So, um, Aranus takes seven plus four, 11 damage. He is knocked prone. He's got, he's got nine left. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, as as I scoop him up out of the acid and land, I can see he's looking kind of bad and like bad, uh, like not moving. <laughs> he's not. He's not moving. He's, and I'll whisper. He's prone. On the, <laughs> I I'll hate whisper. Playing. This is why, guys. This is why I hate. Don't let the DM roll for roll for the the characters. I just like that's hilarious. You're you're so out of love. I'm so lost without you. No, fine. <laughs> anyway, and I will whisper, give him some healing word. 
I need some D4s. I have one. <laughs> it's four. Oh my god, I'm going to kill this four, guy. Four, eight, three, eleven, another three, um, fourteen, and a one fifteen plus nineteen healing for Aaron. Wow, there. nineteen? Yes. Man, what a, you know, you got, you, you really need to go less, like, like three. All right, that's fine. New HP. 19. I didn't like that. All right, so that was a lot. So, all right, you get through. You guys go down the hallway, which seems a lot shorter than what it was. Um, and then you look up, and you see that hole again. Um, Sprock, you can levitate. You can just go up um, if you want. Um, what time is it? Right now? Yeah. It is, so let's say to healing. So it took about 10 minutes to get across for everyone and maybe another 5 minutes for healing for, for so, Aranus. So, so that's be right three, around the... 350, yeah. So as I'm healing Aranus, you see me drop back to stack form and when I finish healing, I pop back to a shambling mound. <laughs> Yeah, so you're now <laughs> a shambling you're, mound for an hour. For an hour, and, just, and, and a pure shambling mound. Oh yeah, now you can't, you can't do. No, I, I can't do anything for an hour. That's very funny. All right, well, um, I'm glad I uh, was able to heal him. So Sprock, are you going up this thing? You're going to levitate. Can he? Yep. Can he levitate other people? Is that something that that Wait, Jake, I, I don't your, think so. Can you assist? Or maybe you have to level up with that? What's your... Well, there's a rope here, isn't there? I or thought you had... Uh, yeah, why? Rope. He has levitation. Or levitate. He can cast levitate at will. No, you guys just went, think it's you a... guys just jumped down. Did Ignis do that? Oh, I think, I feel no, like I feather was... falled us. That's right. And it was like... We, we floated. And it was 120 feet. It was sick. Remember, it was 60 feet yeah. and then 60 feet. So uh, Ignis is going to try to shoot the arrow um, up there to try to – can he do that? Range, 150 feet. Yeah, you can do it. Um, let's go. Here we go. That's a 25, and then – a sleight of hand with that is a 23. Wow, Ignis is rolling high. Um, <clears throat> shoots the arrow up and with the hook, and it sort of hooks in. Um, and she is able to, athletics, ascend to 15 uh, to midway. <laughs> and she's got to roll another one to get to the top. And that's another pass. So Ignis has made it all the way up. I'll uh, I'll let everyone else go up in front of me. So <laughs> Aranus, I assume, would be up next. Aranus, you want to roll for Aranus? You want to roll his? I'll, uh, two I'll athletics? gladly roll two athletics for Aranus. <laughs> he is not proficient in athletics, correct? No. He's Good. Roll. Good. So this first one is a four. So the first one, he, he, he goes up halfway and falls, or partway yeah, and falls. Yeah. The next one was a 15. So he gets up. He's at halfway right now. Okay. Let's go back to this four die. Oh, on 16. Ignis, uh, he's going to take two bludgeoning damage for that. No. Yeah, I don't want to kill him. I have to heal him. I can't heal him again. Yeah, well. Snooze, you lose. Um, <laughs> you let me oh, roll. Sometimes Sprock die. Is, Sprock is up there. Okay, so now um, the mound. Well, actually, now yeah. See, oops. Uh, Aaron, wait. Did Aaronus get up there? Yeah, I just rolled for Aaronus. Oh, okay. He's up there now. 
And so is Sprock. Okay. Yeah, the mound. How the hell are you guys going to do this? I mean, is, is there, what's the wall like? It's, well, it's tight. Remember, it was tight. Oh, I'm just going to plant slither my way up. Okay. I'm a shambly mound. That's true. Um, <laughs> how would you, what role should I give you for that? That should be athletics too, right? Yeah. I'm gripping into the wall and climbing. I feel like more acrobatics. Okay. Do acrobatics. Oh, I- What's a fucking shambling mounds acrobatics? I know their athletics, what their decks. The plant has to be a hole. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to engulf the wall, the rope. Yeah, I'm going to engulf the rope. And just like the same way I climbed the rope going across the, uh, wow. the thing, I'm just going to engulf the rope in my body by itself. That's Dexterity. pretty is a minus one. I will give you a um, a cool... I'm going to use my inspiration. That is a 12. You make it up. All you have to do is get above a, a uh, shitty one. Um, all right, shambling, shambling Mound. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sprock, you guys are in... Essex room, you sort of poke up. Um, that's hilarious. We can. Do you want to continue to go, or should we? Should we pause for this evening? Oh, it's up it to would you. have been. It would have been. I would say. I mean, we could hang out here and take a short rest for an hour, and it that would, would be, yeah, it drop would be, me back to stack form. It would be four. It would be four a.m. when you get to the top, mm-hmm. and then you guys can do your your short rest. How much? But Aranus gets to do a long rest because he's no, um, he he has to still needs four hours to do a long rest. Oh, because of his elf right, thing. Right, right, right. Um, but but he gets to do a short rest and heal back, and he's a rogue, so he doesn't have that many resources. Okay, so he's fine. Sprock, is um, but, you but to, you we can all take a short rest. The harmony is at eight thirty-seven. If everyone does a short rest, it'll be five a.m. Yeah, and then we go pick up Ignis's bow, and then we start stealing stuff. Okay, and then we go steal the skull. All right. Um. All right, that wasn't you know that wasn't that, that bad for not having anything planned. I'm really interested to see. So I sent this um, video, but you don't have to use it if it's. I know that people, certain people don't like to look at the TikTok stuff, so I'll just screenshot it over to you. Um, these potions are at, are pretty hilarious. I can't wait. Oh, I, I watched I, it. It's hysterical. <laughs> it's I, I'm nice. excited to use these. <laughs> um, and each person has one of one of. Uh, one of each of those. Oh, we have one of each. Oh yeah. Uh, oh wow! I uh, thought each of us only had one. No, no, no. Right. They're small and they're very small, so there's, it's it's only enough to like really affect one person. But you guys also have the helmets, which I couldn't find on D and D Beyond. I'll send you those, but they're going to be finicky, so they might not 100% work the entire time. So I, I have a little bit of homework. I got to do the helmets. I'm no longer a shambling mound. And... I immediately <laughs> press the digitation in my entire body. Clean. <laughs> huh. Well, you're in Asics room, so how clean can you really? Can you no, really I, I cleaned that whole thing spotless That's in true. half an hour. They were, Aridus was trying to steal stuff from people in the bar. That's true. And I sang, sang sweet nothing, so the room is filled with a delightful scent. Um, I can hear my daughter crying, which is awesome. Uh, okay, cool. So I feel like, um, we did it guys. Good job. Yeah. Um, I almost killed Aranus. That was hilarious. It would have been funny if you guys gave him like one of the other potions. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good idea. So, cause you guys now have potions that, 
um, are expired. So, you know, some of the potions that uh, the health potions seem to just go rather quickly, but like mm-hmm. the other potions, well, like the time one, the uh... yeah, like the weird the weird one you guys have. There's a there's a couple other other ones that you guys also have. Why Why do you think I've been trying to use all the weird stuff in my bag? Because <laughs> last time you're, I think you were just trying to kill yourself. I'm not sure. No, that's a. Uh... There's so much stuff in Rena and Lone Star and Wilbur's bags that I want to use. Yeah. Huh. All right. Um, so I guess that's where we'll stop for this evening. Um, and we'll pick it back up at the Striad Bar um, 